What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tamri Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, January 15th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Gal Gadot has been tapped to reprise her role as Wonder Woman, voicing the DC superhero in the upcoming animated sequel, The Lego Movie 2, the second part. Gadot joins a voice cast that includes other DC film stars, such as Jason Momoa and Margot Robbie, who will be reprising their roles as Aquaman and Harley Quinn, respectfully. Kobe Smulders of How I Met Your Mother fame previously voiced Wonder Woman in the first Lego movie. Other Justice League members said to appear in the Lego movie too include Batman played by Will Arnett, Superman played by Channing Tatum, and Green Lantern played by Jonah Hill. The Lego movie too, the second part, is set to arrive in theaters on February 8th. Chris Pratt and Elizabeth Banks are returning to voice main characters Emmett and Lucy respectfully. Original directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller are producing the sequel with Trolls Hammer Mike Mitchell directing from a script by BoJack Horseman creator Raphael Bob Wasberg and Mike Fogel. Gadot will be seen as Wonder Woman once again in the upcoming live-action sequel, Wonder Woman 1984, which is set for release on June 5, 2020. The actress announced in December that filming had wrapped on the project, which will feature Kristen Wiig as the villainous Cheetah. And speaking of Chris Pratt, he announced on Instagram Monday that he is engaged to his girlfriend, Katherine Schwarzenegger. Pratt says, Sweet Catherine, so happy you said yes. I'm thrilled to be marrying you. Alongside a photo of himself kissing Schwarzenegger on the side of her face while her engagement ring is on display. He continued, Proud to live boldly in faith with you. Here we go. Pratt and Schwarzenegger, the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Maria Shriver, have been linked together since June. The actor made their relationship Instagram official in December. Pratt was previously married to Anna Ferris for eight years before they called it quits in August 2017. Pratt and Ferris agreed to live near each other as part of their divorce settlement as they co-parent their six-year-old son, Jack. The Americans alum Matthew Rise is set to star in a new version of the TV drama Perry Mason. Executive producer Robert Downey Jr. announced Monday. Uh, Downey Jr. tweeted, Now it seems to me the place to start is at the beginning, Perry Mason. And what it seems to me the beginning of any great project is casting my new best friend Matthew Rise, uh, Robert Downey Jr., executive producer. Uh, the post included a image of the screenplay cover page with Rise name and basled across it. The photo revealed the script was, was which was written by Roland Jones and Ron Fitzgerald. The synopsis from the network says 1932 Los Angeles. While the rest of the country recovers from the Great Depression, this city is booming. Oil, Olympic Games, talking pictures of evangelical fever, and a child kidnapping gone very, very wrong. Based on characters created by Earl Stanley Gardner, this limited series follows the origins of America's fiction's most legendary criminal defense lawyer, Perry Mason. When the case of the decade breaks down in his door, Mason's relentless pursuit of the truth reveals a fracture city and just maybe a pathway to redemption for himself. Rise won the Critics' Choice Award for Best Actor Sunday for his performance in the American Americans, which wrapped its sixth and final season in May. Downey Jr. is an actor best known for his work in the Avengers film franchise. He is also a prolific producer alongside his wife, Susan. The original Perry Mason series ran from 1957 to 1966 and starred Raymond Burr as the title character. Glass castmate. James McAvoy signed on to guest host the January 26th edition of Saturday Night Live NBC announced Monday. Rapper Meek Mill will provide the musical entertainment for the episode. Rachel Bershahan, who won the Critics' Choice Award for Best Actress in a Comedy on Sunday for a portrayal of a 1950s stand-up comedian in Amazon's The Marvelous Ms. Mizell, is set to host SNL this week, this weekend. Greta Van Fleet will be the musical guest on Saturday. Star Trek Discovery co-star Michelle Yeoh is getting her own spin-off, CBS All Access said Monday. The as-yet-untitled sci-fi drama will expand on Yoey's current role as Philippa Gorgu. 
Giorgio, a member of Starfleet's Section 31 Division, a shadow organization within the Federation. He always said in a statement, I'm so excited to continue telling these rich Star Trek stories. Being a part of this universe and this character specifically has been such a joy for me to play. I can't wait to see where it all goes. Certainly, I believe it will go no, where no woman has ever gone before. Co-starring Sonequa Martin, Green, Anthony Rapp, Jason Isaacs, and Doug Jones, Season 2 of Discovery is to begin streaming Thursday. CBS All Access announced in October that it had ordered two seasons of an animated Star Trek comedy series called Below Decks. Yoey's blockbuster movie, Crazy Rich Asians, won the Critics' Choice Awards for Best Comedy Sunday Night. Ratchet producer Ryan Murphy announced on Instagram Monday that Cynthia Nixon and Sharon Stone have joined the cast of his Netflix drama. Set in 1947, the prequel to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is scheduled to begin filming this month. It is the origin story of the titular tyrannical nurse. Murphy wrote, On behalf of myself and Miss Sarah Catherine Paulson, who plays the title role and is also a big fancy producer on it, we are thrilled to announce our amazing cast, a true murderer's row of talent. He added, So many of these actors are supremely talented folks who Sarah and I have both longed to work with. The ratchet principal players in, in alphabetical order, John John Brinones, Charlie Carver, Judy Davis, Harriet Harris, Cynthia Nixon, Hunter Parrish, Amanda Plummer, Corey Stoll, Sharon St- Stone and Finn Wittrock. More to come, but come on, Sarah, Cynthia, Judy, Amanda, and Sharon all doing scenes together. I can't wait. The two-season, 18-episode project was announced more than a year ago. Louise Fletcher won an Oscar for her portrayal of Nurse Ratchet in 1975's Cuckoo Nest, which co-starred Jack Nicholson and was produced by Michael Douglas. Oscar-winning actress Brie Larson has split up with her fiancé, Phantom Planet frontman Alex Greenwald. Larson and Greenwald were a couple for more than five years, announced their engagement in May 2016. But E! News said Friday they recently called off their wedding plans. Beale.com quoted as an unnamed source is saying they have taken a step back from their engagement from the time being, but they remain close. No reason for the breakup was reported. Venom star Tom Hardy is a dad of three. People report Saturday the 41-year-old British actor recently welcomed another child with his wife, actress Charlotte Riley. E! News confirmed the news the same day. Hardy welcomed his first child with Riley in 2015 and is also parents to 10-year-old son Louie with Rachel Speed. He discussed fatherhood in an interview with Esquire in July. The star said of fatherhood, it's a gear shift down from where I've been. Actually, that's not true. It's five gears shift down from where I've been, and then it's up five gears. So it's two vehicles and one sp- space to park in it. Uh, he added, what I'm saying is there's no hard job on the planet and more important than parenting. You've got the military, police, doctors, service personnel, massive respect, huge consequences, but parenting, it's beyond a job, isn't it? Hardy and Riley met on the set of the ITV miniseries adaptation of Weathering Heights and married in July 2014. Both appeared in the BBC Two One series Peaky Blinders. Hugh Grant is requesting help after a thief stole the bag containing a script from his car. The 58-year-old British actor appealed to fans in a tweet Sunday after someone broke into his car and took the bag which also held his children's medical cards. Grant wrote, In the unlikely chance that anyone knows who broke into my car tonight and stole my bag, please try and persuade them to at least return my script. Many weeks' worth of notes and ideas and perhaps my children's medical cards. He added, Coach Films, Ealing St. Mary's Ealing Green, W5 5 EM, leaving the London address of his production company, Coach Films. Graham most recently starred in the BBC One miniseries adaptation of A Very British Scandal, which premiered on Amazon Prime in June. He will star with Nicole Kidman in the new HBO uh, limited series, The Undoing. The Undoing is based on the Jean Hennef Colorette's novel, You Should Have Known. David Kelly Penn and will produce the show, which stars Kidman as a successful therapist and Grant as the character's missing husband. Grant is parents to five children, three with wife Anna Eberstein and two with ex-girlfriend T. Lang Hong. He married Eberstein in London in May. 
The Who have announced a 29-day North American Moving On tour that will take place in summer and fall of 2019. The tour will feature singer Roger Daltrey, guitarist Pete Townsend, guitarist backup singer Simon Townsend, keyboardist Lauren Gold, bassist John Button, and drummer Zach Starkey. The Who will be kicking off the summer leg of the tour on May 7th at the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, before wrapping things up on June 1st at the Scotia Bank Arena in Toronto. The fall portion begins begins on September 6th at the XL Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota, and end on October 23rd at Rogers Place in Edmonton, Canada. The band will also perform in cities such as New York, Nashville, Chicago, Philadelphia, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Boston, Fort Lauderdale, Dallas, Denver, and Los Angeles, among others. The Who will be accompanied by an orchestra on selected dates. Tickets go on sale for the general public on January 18th through Live Nation. The Who also plan on releasing their first new album in 13 years in 2019. Ozzy Osbourne, Disturb and Shine Down are set to headline the 2019 Rocklahoma Music Festival. Rocklahoma is set to take place over Memorial Day weekend from May 24th to the 26th in Pryor, Oklahoma. Bush, Seether, In This Moment, Steel Panther, Jackal, Asking Alexandria, Tech Nine, Blackberry Smoke, Buck Cherry, Bear Tuff, Seven Dust, Aches Freely, Lita Ford, Bad Wolves, and many more are also set to perform at the Hard Rock Festival. Tickets go on sale starting on January 17th at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time through the festival's website. General admission prices will start at $129 with VIP packages also available. Rocklahoma will serve as the opening date for the North American leg of Osborne's upcoming farewell tour. Osborne's longtime collaborator, Zach Weil on guitar, Blasco uh, bass, Tommy Clufetto's drums, and Adam Wakeman on keyboards will be joining him on the tour. Ariana Grande has rescheduled a number of concert dates for her upcoming tour that's in support of her fourth studio album, Sweetener. The North American leg of the tour, which was scheduled to wrap up June 26, will now come to a close on July 13th to accommodate rescheduled dates for shows in Chicago, Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Minnesota, Denver, and Salt Lake City. Grande will perform in Indianapolis on June 29th, Columbus on July 1st, Milwaukee on July 5th, St. Louis on July 6th, St. Paul on July 8th, Denver on July 11th, and Salt Lake City on July 13th. The shows originally were set to take place in April. The rescheduling is due to Grande becoming a headlining act at the 2019 Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival, which takes place on April 12th to the 14th, and then on April 19th to the 21st. The singer canceled two shows, one set for April 8th in Omaha, Nebraska, and one set for June 4th in Raleigh, North Carolina. Refunds are available from the point of purchase. Grande also added a concert in Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena on May 11th. Tickets for the show go on sale to the general public Friday at 10 a.m. local time through Ticketmasters. Grande recently made headlines when she teased on Twitter that her new single, titled Seven Rings, would arrive on Friday. Renowned singer Shaka Khan will return with a new album in February. The 65-year-old queen of funk will release... Hello Happiness, her first album in 12 years on February 15th. Khan announced in the, friends, in the press release Monday. Hello Happiness includes a single from the same name. Khan shared a music video from the track Monday that was directed by Sam Pilling. Khan's agency described Hello Happiness as a tribute to the life-affirming power of music. The album showcased the singer's signature vocals, which also has a contemporary edge. Khan last released the album Funk This in September 2007. She followed up with the single Like Sugar in January 2018 in honor of Record Store Day. Khan came to fame with the funk band Rufus and released her debut solo album Chaka in 1978. She is known for such singles as I'm Every Woman, I Feel For You, and Love You All My Lifetime. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1972, American Pie hits number one on the pop charts. American Pie, an epic poem in musical form that has been etched in the American popular consciousness, hit number one on this date on the Billboard charts. The story of Don McLean's uh, magnum opus began almost 13 years before its release on a date with significance well known to any American who was alive and conscious at the time. 
Tuesday, February 3rd, 1959 was the date of the plane crash that killed Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the JP, the Big Bopper Richardson, a date that would be imbued with a trans, uh, transcendent meaning by Don McLean when he labeled it the day the music died. One might reasonably point out that the baby boom generation has since invested its entire rock and roll experience with transcendent meaning, but don't blame Don McLean for starting the trend. American Pie wasn't written to be a generation defining epic. It was written it was written simply to capture a, a McLean's view of America as I was seen and how I was fantasizing it might become. When asked to explain what exactly he was trying to say with most some of his most ambiguous lyrics, McLean had generally declined. Many others have applied themselves to the task, however, and even today the internet bristles with exhaustively with reasoned interpretations of American Pie and the, its web of lyrical references to the youth culture of the 1950s and 60s. The meaning of the stolen crown and the marching band may be of interest only to the most obsessive of baby boomers, but almost all of us know the chorus of American Pie better than we know our own national anthem, and the chances are good that our great-grandchildren will, too. Which isn't bad for a song that was written and recorded by a struggling folk singer who merely hoped that it would earn two or three thousand dollars and make survival for another year possible. And that is your entertainment report for Tuesday, January 15th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-U-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.